Hello, I'm Matt at U.S. Frontier Miniatures. With this video, I will show you how to create this miniature representation of a thatched roof cottage built by the European pioneers in the colonial territories of early America. I call it the half timber thatched roof English settlers cottage. You know, in earlier videos, I spoke about the Swedish immigrants to the American frontier and their skills in building log cabins. Also, I mentioned the German uh, immigrants and their abilities to build stone houses. In fact, I had a series of videos about them. Well, the English were the first permanent settlers to the American frontier with the Jamestown settlement in 1607 plus the Plymouth, uh, Massachusetts settlement of 1620. The earliest cottages that they built were rather crude and patented after medieval Elizabethan cottages. You can see some of these full-size replicas, by the way, at both Jamestown, Virginia and Plymouth, Massachusetts. Gradually though, as the frontier expanded, the English used half timber construction as you can see here, uh, and, and with these methods, they also use mortise and tenon joints, resulting in a sturdy, very solid structure. Uh, this model represents those construction methods with its half timber beams, its thatched roof with real straw, I might add, as well as I even found the paint that uh, represents the lime wash type stucco white finish that was used back in the 1600s. What do you think? In any event, uh, I'd like to show you how to make one of these uh, interesting models for yourself. <music> I'm Matt from U.S. Frontier Miniatures. Welcome to my workshop and studio. My purpose with these videos is to help you create quality, historically accurate miniatures. So whether you're a beginner, a miniature hobbyist, a model railroader, a mini war gamer, or just someone who wants to create a unique item that they can display on their mantle or bookcase, you've definitely come to the right place. I craft my miniatures in O, a quarter inch scale. However, the methods and techniques that are presented here can easily be adapted to other scales. No fancy power tools are needed. In fact, if you can handle common hand tools, you won't have any problems. Plus, with the techniques that I have learned over the years, plus some unique and simple methods that I have developed myself, making a quality, historically accurate miniature is within everyone's reach. Let's get started. Well, this is my third build on YouTube. Uh, the first uh, was my miniature Delaware Valley Stone House. And I did it as a six part series. Then the second, my Louisiana Territory Log Cabin was a four part series. So I've been uh, learning about YouTube and the process of doing tutorials. And with this, my third build, I plan to do it as only a three part series. But in the process, I also have planned to make it easier for inexperienced people to uh, make a quality miniature job. So uh, let's get to the plans. Uh, my, uh, in addition, you know, to visiting sites that have historic homes on them, and I've certainly been to uh, Jamestown, Virginia, and Plymouth, Massachusetts, uh, I also rely on two books, 
quite heavily. One is uh, American Homes by Lester Walker. And it uh, is a very detailed explanation of early American homes. And as you can see here, here's uh, the English 1625 English cottage from Jamestown, uh, Virginia. Uh, I also uh, rely upon uh, Gerald Forster's book called American Houses, a field guide to architecture of the home. And he also uh, has a, uh, a chapter on uh, one and two story English cottages with their thatch roof. And, uh, and of course, what we'll have in our house, a mud and stick chimney. So uh, what I'm planning to do here is to build a, uh, a one story uh, English cottage. And as it says here, I'm going to build the, uh, the English cottage from Jamestown, Virginia, or a similar replica to that. Uh, it, it says here, the uh, colonists in Plymouth Colony, uh, con construction methods, you know, compared to them and to uh, uh, Jamestown, Virginia, were practically the same. However, the Virginians constructed their frame with thin, equal-sized beams and posts and studs, while the pilgrims up in Plymouth Rock used uh, thick, uh, unmanageable corner posts and beams with light infill wall studs. So what I'm going to do is do the, uh, the English Settlers Cottage and uh, also with the exposed uh, beams, which is also known as a half timber structure. And of course, with the thatch roof and the uh, mud and stick uh, chimney. So what we have with our plans is we're basically going to have a 16 inch wide and 22 and a half inch long, or the equivalent in a quarter inch scale, uh, one room English settler's cottage. The, the roof will be 26 inches long, of course with the overhang and 19 inch deep. We'll have the thatch roof, we'll have the half timbering style, and we'll have a stucco finish to cover the wattle and daub filled walls, you know, of the uh, English settler's cottage. That's just a picture of our roof. Uh, incidentally, you can get these plans uh, down below. Uh, they're free and uh, there's, a, there's a link to enable you to uh, download them. Well, to simplify the process of this build, I want to show you the main materials and supplies that we'll be using. Uh, in case you can't get these uh, supplies and materials locally, I have a list of uh, links below. Uh, first off, starting with the basic structure, I like to use a 3 16 inch gator board. Uh, it's got a foam core, but then it's got a 1 32nd wood veneer finish, which makes it uh, durable. It's, it's, it's lightweight. It's uh, easy to use, and uh, it's also easy, easy to work with in that you can cut it with either uh, a box cutter, which I prefer, or an X-Acto knife. Next, for the uh, roof structure itself, uh, I like to use a product called Plastic Struck, and it's a, uh, it's a styrene, and it's .040 thickness which uh, makes it uh, realistic in that it's the equivalent in real life of about two inches of the roof substructure. Next for the uh, thatched roof, you know, it's always good to use the uh, actual materials when you can get it. And of course, thatched roofs are made from straw and I'm fortunate uh, to be able to get a supply of, uh, of these little 
store brooms that are used for favors, you know, in wedding receptions, etc. But if you look at this uh, closely, it's it's ideal because uh, you can you can see the uh, the uh, fiber stems, and then you can see the little leaves of the straw. So uh, it's of course it is real straw, and it's very authentic. If uh, you know, I earlier built. Uh, a straw house, which you can see, I guess, on the brief intro to this video or on my SD site, which there's a link below. I used this uh, straw, which I could find at the time, from a small uh, broom. And as you can see, it's not really true to scale compared to this, you know, in the quarter inch scale. This makes for a very nice. Uh, uh, thatched roof. Here's an example of the uh, bundles that we'll be making for this. Next, uh, for the half timber structure, I recommend using uh, a basswood and using uh, one eighth by one quarter inch basswood. Here's, here's one that I took out of the uh, package and of course we'll be weathering this and uh, uh, also distressing it to look like real axe horn uh, wood. For the uh, chimney uh, wood and glue construction, uh, I'm, I'm recommending here that we use a 132nd by 3 16 inch basswood. This uh, is the actual one I've taken out of here. And again, we'll be weathering this. We're going to use other basswood uh, to support the gator board and to give us some gluing surfaces. Uh, for example, we'll need four corner braces. I use this 3 8 inch uh, square basswood. But since it's internal, you can substitute any suitable size material that's convenient to work with or spare wood that you have around the house. Also, uh, I used the same uh, 3 8 inch square wood to furnish two, I'll put actually two here, two gluing braces, which gives you the capability of conveniently gluing it onto a display stand or any permanent uh, mounting that you want to put it on. Also then, uh, as far as gluing on the uh, styrene roof, I use this uh, a one quarter inch square uh, basswood, you know, to come up with four of these, you know, to be able to have a good gluing surface. The foam itself in the gator board is not a good gluing surface and the glue will really eat it away. In addition now, uh, for our door, I use uh, this uh, plank door, which I get from uh, San Juan Motor Company. It's uh, part number 3633 and again the a detailed list of the parts and the supplies are down below. Uh, in the video I did on building the log cabin, I actually built a plank door. So if you're interested in doing that, you can refer to that video. I forget which one of the four part series it was. But also from uh, San Juan uh, uh, Model Company, I get these small attic windows. They come eight to a package. We'll only need four and we'll modify them uh, slightly, you know, in order to adapt them for our uh, English cottage windows. For the rest of the supplies, I'll briefly run through them as we'll be covering them in further detail as, as we go through the individual steps. Uh, first, we wanna get hemp cord. 100% uh, uh, crafters of cotton hemp cord. And uh, 
that will go, uh, we'll use that to use the uh, tie our bundles of straw with. Next, uh, to make our stucco for the English cottage, we'll use a combination of, we'll use this golden light molding paste and we'll be blending that in with uh, colonial white paint from Old Village. To weather our, uh, our half timber woods, we're gonna use a combination, it's an old railroader's trick, by the way, of uh, rubbing, hall, uh, rubbing alcohol and uh, India ink. And a few of the uh, paints that I use with spray cans, we're gonna use this uh, Rust-Oleum white primer to go ahead and uh, prime the whole cottage once we, once we get the basic structure uh, built. Then we're gonna use, on our roof structure, we're gonna use this gray primer, also made by Rust-Oleum. And then we're gonna color the top of the roof with this color from Krylon called Matte Summer Wheat. And the reason we're using that is that if any uh, light shines through the uh, thatched roof, it, it will be pretty much blended in with the golden brown of the, uh, of the straw. Gator board cuts easily uh, with a sharp knife. I prefer a box cutter knife that you see here, uh, but an X-Acto knife would also uh, work well. I also use a one quarter inch raised lip ruler, which uh, helps to protect your hands. Next, uh, we are going to cut out the two roof pieces out of the plastic struck 0.40 styrene. The styrene also cuts fairly easily with a sharp knife. Just score it a few times and then it will bend right off at the cut points. Included with the plans is a list of the various braces that we'll need to glue the cottage together. So I'll go ahead, I have a little miter saw here, and I'll go ahead and uh, cut four cottage braces, the two glue mounts, four of the roof braces, and of course the parts. I'll saw these parts uh, off camera and then I'll get back to you. Okay, well we have our braces and uh, chimney piece cut out. And our next step uh, for our one eighth by one quarter inch half timber cross beams that we're gonna use, as well as our one thirty second by three sixteenths inch uh, slats for, our, for, our, for the top of our chimney. It makes sense to do those or distress them in 24 inch pieces. To do that, uh, we're gonna simulate these broad axe marks that you see here from a log cabin. And we're also going to uh, distress or make uneven the, uh, the different edges of, of, of the beams. To do that, we're just gonna take our box cutter and uh, simulate uh, those broad axe marks no need to be uh, precise with this as everyone who 
handle the broad axe used and had different uh, marks in, in the way they handled the axe. Here's an example of my broad axe marks. I hope you can see them. Uh, next, what we're going to do is to just make those edges uneven rather than the nice e even even edged wood that we buy, you know, from the hobby store. And we'll just take a box cutter and cut slivers all along the edges that uh, uh, that will. Next, uh, to achieve the appearance of aged wood, we're going to use an old model railroader's uh, technique of mixing uh, 20 parts alcohol and one part Indiana ink. And we'll go ahead and mix that solution and then we'll coat it on to the ties. Go ahead and uh, brush it on liberally. You, you'll find that each piece uh, colors differently, and uh, and I guess based on the the type of wood it is, and the and the age of the wood, and the cut of the wood, and uh, it'll it'll achieve a nice appearance. So after we go ahead and brush it on, we'll just take a uh, a dry cloth and uh, wipe it off and you get that nice effect. If you're not happy with it, you want it darker, put another coat on it. Okay, I've got one of the half timber logs uh, done and one of the chimney pieces done. So. I'll go ahead and finish the rest offline and get back to you. Well, okay, I finished applying the India ink and alcohol solution to the beams. I think you can see what I mean. The finishes vary from a golden brown to a blackish gray uh, aged look. So that's the end of uh, part one. Uh, coming up in part two, we'll assemble the basic house. Uh, mount our doors and windows, and uh, also mount our half timber beams. Uh, now, if you found this uh, use video useful, please give it a thumbs up below and also subscribe. That way you'll be informed of my new projects. Uh, below, I have added time codes and major section headings so that you can access specific parts of the project more easily. This is a complete project, by the way from the chimney top right down to the display stand that the cottage sits on. And by necessity, I've divided it into three video parts according to the sequence that I actually built it in. So if you're going to build this uh, English Settlers Cottage for yourself, I certainly recommend that you view the other two videos. Don't forget to get a free copy of the house plan drawings below, plus the list of supplies and materials that I used for this project. In case you can't get some of the items locally, I furnish links for you to obtain them. Lastly, I invite you to visit my SD shop where you can see examples of uh, my other models.